Okay, so what we've actually done, the air intake that we've got here, um, all we've basically done is get some Mr. Surface, so this is the 1000, tip it into it, give it a swill around, tip it out, let that totally dry for a couple of hours, and then all I've done is come along with some Johnson's Clear, just like this, tipped it into it, swill around, tip it out, letting that dry, and that's drying at the moment. It's got a couple of little runs on here, but we can sand them off and give it another dip and away we go. And then over the next few days, that'll totally dry off. So when we come to do it white and we can spray it white or we can dip it white, whichever way we're going to do it, um, we'll end up with a totally seamless finish down in those intakes. And that's what we're after. So that one's done. The engine itself, now as we were saying, it's a lovely piece of work with the photo etch parts and things like that. Problem is, um, you're not going to see any of it. So what I'm thinking of doing is doing the engine, um, and obviously it's made up of four parts, is doing three parts and then one open. So or you can look down into part of the engine. Now the trouble is, obviously, once you've got your kit, and here it is together like this, and it's together, you're never going to see it. So what I'm actually thinking of doing is cutting the tail section here so you can see it a little bit more. Um, but this all depends on how far in the actual engine is going to sit and the bits like that. So when you pull off the, the side bits here, you can get a rough feel of how the engine is going to go and where it's going to look to. And this is it here. Now the brake point itself, if we, use ways, if we do this like this, we can see where we're to. Now the brake point itself is here. So we're only going to see a part of this back of the engine in here. We're only going to see this section because this entire back area will then pull away and reveal this point. Another thing we have to take into effect is obviously closing it up, how it's going to lock because obviously there's a lot of weight back here. It's going to want to then lean on this engine and that's something we don't want it to do. So we're going to have to think of a little ways for it to actually clip in and bolt in and be a nice fit. But this is the trouble is, is obviously we're still going to lose a good portion of this engine, this front engine, is going to be lost because we're only going to see this actual back part coming out the back here. But what we'll do is we're going to put the engine together um, and as you can see we've got projector pin marks down in here, quite numerous. Two ways of doing that, we could sand them out which is my preferred option as much as possible and then all we do is come along with some filler afterwards just to fill them in. So if we take care of that now, if I just do want to show you. So using some normal green um, putty or any of your preferred putty. Now a little trick I do, I always use a cotton stick, uh, cotton bud for this. So all we do, pick a bit up on the cotton bud and we just smooth it in and go both directions. Now the reason for using a cotton bud is that it just pushes it in there very nicely a little bit better than a blade because it tends to be a bit softer but obviously if we're going to have it open you're going to be able to see into this and you'll see some nasty holes because obviously we'll be painting it up silver so I'll just continue filling these for a minute okay so now this putty is all dried on there but as I say it's all very crispy and crusty so what we're going to do if we just start off with um, I've got here a half rounded off file all we're going to do is just take off all the real lumpy bits of filler that are on there so we just carve our way in with this one just like so <laughs> And we've got rid of all the big bits like that. What we can actually do, come along, got a, quite a coarse file to start with. And we're just going to sand it in there. It doesn't have to be, you know, totally smooth. But what we want to do is obviously get it to a stage where we can put a bit of Mr. Surfacer over the top. And uh, by the time it's had that over there, we won't see any of those ejector pin marks, which are pretty deep, pretty nasty. As I say, normally you wouldn't see this, but it's just purely because I want to show the engine. It does seem a a crying shame really to leave it all covered up so what I'll do is I'll just continue sanding this like this once I was done as you can probably see on these bits here all I've done is then given it a coat of Mr Surface up right at the top to give us a nice bed once that's totally dry what we can actually do then is start bringing all the bits together we've got all the other ones all sort of cleaned up and ready to go like that so we just get this one sanded down Mr Surface up and then we can start getting the engine together Okay, so with the engine part, obviously what we've got down here, we've just got the um, PE, uh, Photo Etch PE1s, which make up, and all you do is sandwich them in between 
So trying to keep them as flat as possible. All we do is place one in and you just sort of build this up and then place the next one in the back. And then literally if you give it a bit of a twist, you can lock it in. And when you're happy how it's all lined up and sitting, the way I've been doing it, just holding it just like this and then dropping a bit of extra thin and let the capillary action run around. The reason for doing this, it'll stop the blades from all shifting, but it still allow the entire thing to twist quite nicely. So all you'll do is obviously uh, it's part number G30 and PE1 all the way to the back. And then once you get to the back, there's a final fan blade goes on the back just like that. And then part number G29, which I do believe is this one here, will then just fit straight into the back part. He says hoping me. So obviously we've just got to lock it in just like so so there we go that's that one on so what we'll do we just make sure that's all in nicely just, if you just sort of turn it you can get it to lock in sometimes hold on if we just do this manually do the old-fashioned way We'll place it in, a bit of glue just around the rear end, which will just hold this all in place. And then we'll just look for the receptor. There we go, and that's it. So we just hold that for a moment just to dry. And then same thing again, we just put a little bit of glue around the outside part just to make sure that all squashes in nicely and we'll just hold that uh, that gives us our cylinder which is all the compressor blades for the main engine itself so we just hold this just for a second to get that one to go there we go and then on the back part we've got the large one which is going to fit just in here like that. Now the thing is, um, if you look at the references, also the Crusader engine, um, this is a sort of generic one, um, which looks quite a lot similar to, um, you know, obviously the Crusader engine. It's the same one that sort of went into the Super Saber and things like that. And obviously what they've done is they've used the end, the, the actual, the look of the engine end part, although it doesn't look like anything that's in reality. But because there's no way of looking down the air intake because it's blanked off and also there's a gap, you're not going to be able to see this end anyway. Really, we're using it so um, we can actually see and it will hold these outer parts together, which is going to be quite crucial because we're going to leave the top one off so we can see all these. Okay, so what we've actually done now, um, as you can see, we've got the engine part up. So we've got the front blade, which we know is wrong on the front here. But also, as you can see down in here, We've um, smoothed out as best as we can. We've got rid of all those pinholes um, and all the rest of it, which are very, very deep, which allows us then to fit this, which is the compressor blade fan, down inside to here, thus giving us a very nice look to the engine. Now, in the meantime, I've also filled and sanded all the sort of pin marks, ejector pin marks, which are down inside the engine, which as I said, if you're not going to actually have it all showing, you won't have to worry about it because you're never going to see them. And the same for this one in here as well, which is quite a complex sort of pain really of actually doing it. The other problem we're going to have is that the limited view you're going to see. So if we just plug this in here, how it will go in, which will be something like that. Normally the engine sits in here like this. Now to give us a view of what we're actually going to see before we make our cut, if we line these up to the same, so actually we're going to make the cut here. So we're only going to see the back part of the actual engine anyway. So when you have a look at this, it's really this rear part here that we're going to see. So these location tabs, again, are going to have to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sort of hybrid because to attach that tail, which is going to be extremely heavy, hanging what will be onto this engine section, I'm going to cut across and just leave it as a slot tab. So what happens is this rear part will slide into here 
um, and we'll take some of the weight. So the engine will take the weight and also what we'll do is we're going to move this sort of former shape we've got here. We're going to copy across and we're going to put down here as well. So between the two of them it should take quite a bit of the weight and hopefully between that um, and some little pins that we'll have coming across so this tail section will click in and will lock in. Obviously, you could have it completely shown separate and just have it off to one side. That's not a problem. But as I said, it seemed a shame, so that's why we're going ahead with it. So in a moment, what we're going to do, we're going to make that big decision and chop the tail off, which is obviously always the scary part. In the meantime, we can carry and get this engine together. Now, we've got various bits that's going to go on over this. Um, and obviously, we've got the top section, which will fit in in something like this. So it goes in clip in something like that to show us our top of the engine on as well which then we'll be able to remove and away we go so the other parts that we've got to go on is uh, we've got sort of this next section uh, which holds this part which there again there's various PE sections which are going to go into this so what we can actually do is we'll pop these in together to make this rear ring and then we can spray it all silver so what we're going to do we're going to Hold this in position, something like that. Okay, come along with our bit of extra thin. Drop that in there just like that. Give that a few seconds just to bite. Okay, then we're going to give that a bit to dry. And what we'll do, we'll just build up those outer sections onto that. And then once those are done, we can literally slide all this tart to get it together. Once we're together, we can actually start working on the paint of actually getting it all painted up and looking the business. Right, with a few authorizations or alterations, I should say, what we've actually done, we've put on some of these parts uh, that are afterwards. We've actually clipped all these on, which are sort of external engine parts. Also, what we've done is we've chopped off, um, it's like an X shape, how it would lock normally into the tail. Um, into this groove here we've taken it so it will slip and just slide in um, so back and forth so it'll just give it some it will take more of the weight off the tail because I'm still worried about that but there we go that's engine section actually done so what you can actually do is we've got the fan blades here and obviously the photo etch blades have moved a little bit but there we go that's our little system that the reason for all this work extra work going to evolve but that will slide in just like that and that's the view we're going to get from the top although we won't we'll probably only see this half but it will you know we can actually pull the engine out to show we have got the top cover but obviously we're not going to be able to fit it but it's a nice touch just to have it nearby to show that it is open so that's that done now the tail section which we polished off to make a perfect finish um, for the outside because obviously it is going to be seen so we filled in all the seam lines and rounded it all off nicely now normally you have another set of fan blades at the back here but this is the business end where you're going to see and it doesn't look right so what we've done we've taken that out completely and we're not going to have it because we're going to actually use the actual working parts so we can see it so this will clip to the end so what's going to happen is um, basically this end part is going to fit over the top of there and then very carefully get this so it clips in the right way that goes on and there's our engine section as seen and obviously you can see the blades uh, up in the inside just like that then this one is going to come along and it's going to bolt to the end of it just like that now normally this entire section would then fit very nicely let me just pop it in for a second like this then we've got this collar ring round here which then fits into the back end there so then from the rear you would see engine in there looking very nice but obviously we're going to make a cut here and take this off now I'll show you how I did it in a minute but I've already cut the back end of this one off here which is obviously a very daunting bit when you chop it off but to give us a view of how it's actually going to look he says very carefully just get this out because obviously we'll glue this into position in a minute but this is really just to show you what we're getting on to and this part we just slide that in there we'll actually sit on the back end just like this and this is what we're actually going to see we're going to see this actual part looking something like this hanging out the back end of it which is all very nice and then we can have this one on the back or you could leave it in here whichever way you wanted to do it in some ways because of 
the way that this is a quite a nice look at the back and sitting it on here, you know, you have got the option where it's like you leave it in there and fit it to that, and that will give it more rigidity again because it will lock onto this section. Personally, we're going to have the entire thing hanging out, so it's going to hang all the way up here. But as you can see, it shows enough of the engine that we'll be able to see what's really going on with it and the bits like that, and that's really what we're after. So there we go. In, after we've sprayed this, I'll show you about chopping the back end of, of that, so don't worry. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get ourselves sorted out with some metal colors. I'm gonna do this all in acrylics. I was gonna do it with our clouds, but we're actually gonna work our way through this wall with acrylics, so we're gonna have to spray it all up um, and give us a nice, and then what we can do is, we can go around and do some little bits of detailing. Now I have managed to get, uh, printed some of these off, some pictures of the tail end, it's gonna look like this. Um, and there we go, some other close-up shot. But unfortunately, they're all in black and white. I've got nothing in colour, so I've got no real guides of how you know the colours are going to look on it. So a lot of this is going to be guesswork. So I've scoured the net, I've made lots of inquiries, but can't find any colour photos with the back off. So a lot of this is going to be a bit of sort of, you know, hopefully it'll look right on the day, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is we'll clear the bench off, um, we'll get some paper down and everything else, and we can get to play. Okay, so for this, the two colours we're going to use, um, we're going to use um, Citadels, but obviously you could use um, Tamiya or anybody else is like this just happen to like the citadels because they go on quite nicely I'm going to use chainmail and bolt gun now the chainmail is going to be the more silvery color which is going to be for the more internal stuff externally we're going to use the bolt gun metal which is a darker color then what we can actually do is do a little bit of post shading and spraying around to give it some sort of depth of color but certainly for the insides we just need it to be all nice and shiny now if you're using anybody else's chances are it's about a 50 50 mix but when you're using citadels as these are they're extremely thick, which makes them great value for money because they go on forever. Um, but apart from that, um, they are just a little bit thick. So all we do, take a nice clean soft brush and then grab yourself some thinners first into a colour cup. <coughs> Let's open up a new bottle. <coughs> In this case, I'm using uh, Mr. Colour Thinners, which is their Guns um, Clear Colours. Let me just move from the bung it at the end. There we go, grab a bit of that into the colour cap. Just going to blow that through to make sure it's coming through okay. And then all we're going to do is take a brush full, okay, and into probably one mil of thinners. Now the reason for doing that is this stuff is very, very thick. It covers extremely well, and that's what we're saying about. So all we do, we take that out now. Okay. Our spray. There's our spray coming out. So what we're going to do, we're going to twofold. We'll spray in um, the inside areas to start with. Silvery. Just like so in there. Inside of this piece. There we go. Then what we can do is we can get on with the blades in here. So obviously it's going to take a bit of time spraying these down to cover because it is over metal as well. Make a couple of passes and then we'll let this dry off for a little bit. And then we'll come back and give it another spray and continuously work in layers. So we just let that dry off, that's that colour cut full. And then say, what we can do, we can spray up these as well, and then we can darken them up in any bits and pieces. So I'll just give it another coat. So there we go, that's the silver um, done on that. As you can see, it gives us a nice engine effect. Quite happy with the way it all is. And then as we said before, the vein system will just simply drop fit in. Like that, and that'll give us our nice engine sort of done like that. So what we're gonna do now is spray on the darker colour. So Bit of run on. So what we do, we load up now with thinners first, and this is the gold bar, um, gold, uh, sorry, bolt gun metal. 
So we've got a brush full like that into probably about one and a half mil. Give it a good old mix. Just like so. Now this is a darker colour, so what we'll do is we'll start at the top and we'll just work our way around shooting down because we obviously don't want to fill it up inside. And there we go. Just one like that. Just here to the top part. Then in from the other direction so we don't get any shadowing. So just carefully hold it here. There we go, that's that done. So we just stick that side down. Just do the top part. Just get a little low on here. So look at that. So I'll see, same for the other parts. So there we go, that's the, the difference. And obviously at the end, we've still got the silver on the nozzle here. We'll darken that up again. We'll use, um, perhaps add a little bit of black or a different type of metal color to that and add to it. I'm quite happy the way that it's gone. Um, we'll let those dry off. And then what we can do is actually bring it all together. And then afterwards with the combination of literally um, a wash over the engine to sort of bring out the hoses and everything to life and a little bit of dry brushing with some thin silver it should bring us a very, very nice engine effect. Okay, so one of the big things we're going to do for this, um, obviously it's a personal choice, you don't have to do it, but it's just, I'll show you how we're going to do it, but we're going to cut this rear section completely off. Now, I've already done it on the other side, and to be honest, I actually cut it in the wrong place, so I had to reattach it and do it again. But anyway, this is where you have to be careful. Now, I cut it in the wrong place, because I actually, thinking ahead, I thought the brake was here. It's actually further back, nearer the tail section. Now, a good way to do this is to physically mark it out first. So actually get a pen and mark out the actual part you're gonna be cut, double check your references, make sure, have a good look at it before you make any major cuts like this. Because obviously, you know, here's a section where I cut this back part completely off thinking it was right, had a look straight as soon as I'd done it, I realized it was the wrong part and had to sort of reattach it as we've done. So we've done a bit of a filler job um, and some sort of rescribing and everything. It's not a mass problem to do it. It's just a bit of a pain having to do it all again. So make sure you're gonna do it right. The way I do it is, because this is a nice straightforward big cut, um, we're literally just going to chop straight through the back end of it here. I'm going to use a big razor saw. Um, this is the Tammy one. It's got quite a nice thin blade on it. It's about the right sort of thickness for the panel line on here. Obviously, if you're going to take a, something smaller, something like a 172 especially, or 148, you might be better off with a thinner type of saw. Uh, perhaps one of these little ones because it's got a far far thinner blade than this one because obviously if you take a chunk out of it scale ways it could be like a couple of inches thick that you're taking out but basically what we're going to do i'm just going to place the saw right in that panel line making sure it is the right one again and all we're going to do is very very slowly and very lightly cut it now all we're going to do is let the saw do the work but we're going to take our time and cut it very very slowly and let this go through have a look, making sure we're all okay and in the right place because we want to follow the panel lines. Because otherwise, if you cut down, what might happen is you might suddenly come off at a slight angle back here and before you know it, you're well out of where you want to be. So what we're going to do is just take our time, nice big saw, and we're just going to gently let it work its way all the way through. Now, if you wanted to, or you haven't got a big saw, you can use the little one and literally just cut it down and follow where that line is. It's just that on something like this, it's big, it's nice and straight. We can just make a straightforward cut right the way down. 
So what we'll do, we'll continue the cut. So just making sure we can see where it's going. And we're following the right panel lines. Okay, now what we've actually done there, we've actually cut our way through. We've come right the way through now. So obviously it'll be a lot quicker cutting. So just going to take our time. Just going to follow it down. Okay, blade out, have a look, make sure you're happy. Okay, now just before I go right the way down, we're going to turn this round. And we're just going to do the other side. And just watch how your blade's actually going through. Because there's two things, we want to make this as square as possible. There we go, we're through there. We want to make it as square as possible, so when this part comes back on, it's going to just fit straight in there. Now we're done in there, so now what we can do, we can just take it down to this tail bit. <clears throat> what we do, I'm just going to do this on the side of the table so we can see more. Watch where that panel line is actually going. And there we go. Tail section is off. It's got a little bit of clean up to do. So what I tend to use is a nice bigger strong file just for this. And that'll just get rid of all this bit of splintering off as it goes down and using a nice big file <laughs> there we go just like that same on the other one push those bits all through and there we have and then hopefully it will just all go back together very very nicely just like so so there's the tail off and obviously it is a big step as I say you don't have to do this this is just purely for me what we've actually got here is the engine section, which is now glued front and part and end on there. So what we have to do is because this is going to fit somewhat like this, so the back end is going to be hanging out just like this, so it will give us something nice to look at. Now the tail section, where the two halves together are going to push in and go in there, so it's going to lay like this. Okay, now the thing is, <coughs> down the back here, you've got this collar just here and this ring would then fit the nozzle would actually fit on the end here so actually what we're going to do when this section is together and it will be like this we want this to be able to push clean on to the back section here and pop out the bottom but obviously we're not going to go because of that so what we need to do is grab the old your multi-tool like this okay you could use a file Slow speed, don't go too quick, otherwise you end up make, make, melting the plastic. So what we do, we We don't want to take it all the way out because the trouble is if we took it all the way out this is actually giving some rigidity to the back there and holding that open so hopefully when both parts go on obviously it needs to be a bit more cleaned up and things yet but this gives us our rough look at our tail section just like this then hopefully this nozzle will come along and we'll be able to fit through still. No, it's not quite going to fit, but you get the idea. So we need to take a bit more out. And what we can do is we can actually clean it up and make it look better by using smaller files. I've got a strong one in here. And certainly if you've got some rat's tail files, the round type or the half moon one, uh, something like this where you've got a half shape, 
you can get in there and clean this up a lot nicer. But what you want to do is just leave a little bit of that ring in there because it say it does give a bit of rigidity down the back here, so we don't want to take that totally off. I'm going to get these cleaned out um, so this fits nicely, and then we can get it together. <laughs> 